Welcome to the Gals Guide Podcast. Join us on an adventure to get to know famous and infamous women from around the world. Each of our presenters has a pick. Is she ancient history? Is she breaking news? Is she safe for work? Well, that's up to each presenter. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. It is a new month at the Gals Guide podcast, and this is the last month of our research travels for the Gals Guide Passport program. We have learned about women in Australia, Africa, Ireland, the Middle East, Japan, the Caribbean, Canada, India, South America, and even American farmers. So for our final stop of the year, we are learning about Scandinavian gals, my people. Turns out I'm 70% Scandinavian, y'all, because Ancestry.com. That's why. So I'm super excited about this. Um, Scandinavian is also known as the Nordic countries as well. And it's where you'll find Sweden and Finland, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Alan, and the Faroe Islands as well. It's always, uh, <laughs> it's like a land. So I always think it's a joke where it's like a land because you got your Greenland, or sorry, you got your Greenland and you got your Iceland. But then you've also got your A-land. You don't even know. <laughs> but it's like pronounced Allen, like Alland with a D on it. Ooh. But it's a little island. It's uh, it's near those Faroe Islands. So. Sweet. Yeah, exactly. You learn something new on this podcast yes! every time. Every right. single time you listen in. You're yeah. Nordic travelers. I mean, they love their islands and their land masses. So I get it. So let me introduce you to my traveling companions for this month. So... Uh, first up, she is our Fab Book Club Director and Vice President of Gals Guide. It's Katie Young, everybody! Yay! Hooray! Yay, Katie. Katie, introduce yourself to the people who have not yet heard your velvet tones. Oh, I don't think I have velvet <laughs> tones, but I like the hype. You're yes. my hype girl. There you go. Yes, cheerleader, <laughs> always. Ride or die. <laughs> um, so, I've been part of Gals Guide from the beginning. Yes, you have. I love everything we do here. I've super loved this travel around the world learning Yay! about women from all over sweet that's been awesome this year and i really appreciate it Yay! it's been cool to research i know and it's been a challenge but an interesting one right yes yes, yes. sweet exactly i dig it i dig it well next up she's a returning guest it's cassie simcox everybody Hi! Yay! Yay! i'm back i'm back <laughs> so happy to be back thank you for asking me to come back again anytime it's- thrilled yay well reintroduce yourself to the people pretend that the people haven't heard of your loveliness yet and oh uh, and tell them all about it <laughs> um well i am cassie simcox and i've been involved with gals guide off and on the past year it all started last fall when i enrolled in the writing class Blue and boat. then went on to submit something for the yearly anthology yes! and was more then surprised and excited when something it got accepted. Yes, yes. And then I also was a part of a podcast. I believe it was almost just about a year to the I, day it was, ago. It was spooky season. It so. was spooky season. Mm-hmm. It was very fun, and I've just been waiting for the day when you've asked you asked me back. And yes. So thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. We're happy it's to have you here. Uh, pleasure. Anytime. To have you back. Truly. Thank you. <laughs> I dig it, I dig it. And then as for me, I am Riru. I'm the executive director of Gals Guide. And I've also been really enjoying learning about women around the world. I feel like there's so many more women from different regions and from the regions we covered uh, to explore. But I'm really glad that we kind of like scratched the surface anyway and kind of started that exploration. Um, We might also have Bonnie joining us later in the episode, so I'm just letting you know. (laughs) It is totally a possibility, just in case. regular listeners are like, I know, where's where's Bonnie? Bonnie? Where's the president? (laughs) Exactly. Mr. President. I know. Stay tuned. We're going to find out as well. Madam President. (laughs) Right. Return. (laughs) But I do have a proverb. So I've been picking a proverb from the region. I mean, I'm going to tell you straight. I'm Swedish, so I went with a Swedish proverb because it's one that I've heard, like, my family say or I've said, like, many, many times, which is... Sometimes you can't see the forest because of all the trees. So that forest from the trees kind of analysis is a Swedish proverb. I also thought of this one because we have lots of episodes. We're going to get really close to our 300th episode. So that's a lot of trees. But the podcast and exploring women's history is the forest. So we created and kind of held a little space within that forest for women's history. So I thought thought it was fitting for a two-for-one operation. Uh, So cute. (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. So uh, normally this is where I hand it over to Bonnie to see uh, if she wants to go first. <laughs> However, uh, I will totally plant the seed, if you will. Sorry, I'm trying to go with the forest and the trees and the reference. And oh, Bonnie's here. Oh, oh my gosh. I just, I just Bonnie. heard Bonnie. Oh, my goodness. All right. Stay oh. tuned for half a second <laughs> so that Bonnie can hear all about my amazing gal. <laughs> Uh, we found Bonnie this time <laughs> just roaming the library she was just hanging out going I wonder if there's a podcast happening and we said yes there is so I'm gonna introduce you but I nice. will still go first so you have time to kind of like settle in and all that sure. good stuff but for everybody out there our wonderful uh president of gals guide Bonnie Fillenworth everybody she's Yay! here Yay! So, Bonnie, introduce yourself to the good people. <laughs> My name is Bonnie Catherine Joseph Fillenworth. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I do paintings of women throughout history. And you have a new one. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just did. I'm not sure quite where it sits. Okay, that's fair. Totally fair. Because it's technically not. I have my kind of portraits of ladies and then I have my that's what she said which are quotes yes I just finished I a childless cat ladies <laughs> yes. oh which is oh. amazing yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's technically she did not say childless cat ladies right exactly but neither did my nevertheless she persisted one either right so it's a new art piece and it's fantastic and, and is it available for sale on etsy yet it is on yeah it's on etsy yeah and i had a request um to put make it available on t-shirts so it's on t public oh. now Ooh, nice. and i'm thinking awesome. of removing the text and just making the little squares i made it kind of look like taylor swift's era's poster perfect oh yes. um and it i'm thinking of removing the text and making it just the squares yeah and having that be repeated pattern for fabric. Yes. Oh, that could be so really kind of want some childless yeah. cat lady pajama pants. Yes, always. I bet you mm -hmm. could sell some this yep. weekend with uh, Taylor in town. Mm -hmm. This is very true. Oh, well, shit. I will put it in City some show ready. notes. She's Send ready. me oh, no. all the links, and we will tell all the peoples. Sweet, look at that. All right. Well, I'll get us gloriously started Wait. on uh, Scandinavian gal. So I have for you, and it's a really quick one, honestly. I have you for you, Swedish royalty. Ooh. who saved her country with alcohol Ooh. nice right exactly she's living the fairy tale she's living mm. the life i want <laughs> right? mm -hmm. so uh alva oh sorry ava my goodness gracious Ooh. uh ava alkablad um i will sometimes say eggblad nice. <laughs> just to kind of like uh you know uh americanize it but the wonderful Swedish gentleman on my how do you pronounciate sort of thing said Ekeblad. Thanks. <laughs> so she was born in Sweden in 1724. So we're, nice. we're, we're going like a little bit far back all. Uh, she was also born into a very well-to-do family. Uh, her father was the Count... Uh, and he was a Swedish political influencer. I had to say it that way because of the way we have influencers. But that's pretty much like he was doing the Instagram thing of an influencer, but with like royalty in Sweden. Oh, <laughs> like etchings. Did he make pamphlets? A little yeah. bit, but also dinner parties kind of influencer oh. sort of thing, right? My kind of yes. influencer, honestly, mm. much preferred. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> the in-person influencer like yes. we used to do. What was that? Uh, her mother was a marshal and a privy counselor which also meant politics so okay. she was also in the politics so therefore having dinner parties and all that kind of good stuff you have both of her parents coming at you both of them uh ava's parents also had 14 children whoa but only three of them survived to adulthood Womp. Yikes. so ava was one of them thank goodness but yeah Ooh. so let's just say she kind of valued the idea of not everybody makes it to adulthood <laughs> we need to help our brothers and sisters literally and figuratively <laughs> oh. uh so at the age of 16 this is not too much of a surprise because we're talking like the 1700s but at the sure. age of 16 she got married and she married a count as well. Mm -hmm. So that royalty, then she basically like upped her game a little bit into more royalty. Uh, now, she could have just entertained nobility. She could have taken care of her seven children. Many of her children actually survived. Mm -hmm. But this gal had a brain for science. And she was nice. going to use it, damn it. 
Uh, so she became an expert agriculturalist, and she focused her attention on the estates of not only her own, but also the Friends of Friends royal family, uh, with that politics kind of around. Uh, in the castle kitchen, for some reason I just imagined this castle kitchen, she's <laughs> experimenting with potatoes. Mm. So potatoes were introduced to Sweden in 1658, but they mm. were only available to the nobles. So this was a very fancy thing to actually have Mm -hmm. potatoes available. But Ava started to notice there were very hardy crop and that they could be used for not just the nobles. Like if you showed the people people how to plant and thrive (laughs) potatoes, uh, this could really be good. They could grow very well. But she was determined to figure out what could you do with these potatoes, right? So what is the actual uses she could bring to the people? So her first discovery... I like where this is going. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got a guess. But go yes. on. Yeah, what's your guess? Vodka. Yes, it is vodka. Yes. Yes, potato vodka. But first, there was potato flour. Oh, yeah. Which oh. goes works very well in a okay. wide variety of stuff. Gluten-free. So, gluten-free. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, potato Bring it back. flour. Yeah. Uh, then, eventually, it became potato vodka because... Mm. You know, priorities, mm-hmm. right? Priorities. Uh, a so, girl's got to keep warm. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Especially now we, back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, a nice Skip cold night in the castle. The... <laughs> right. <laughs> I just back. need alcohol. It's a, it's a whole diet all in one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we can't say that she invented vodka, and we definitely can't say that she invented potato vodka, because it's very highly debated. The stuff wasn't always written down. I have a teeny tiny little rabbit hole that I wrote on the back of this paper. Nice. <laughs> So uh, Poland was the first one to have a written mention of the word vodka, though it was wodka. Uh, nice. It was W-O-D-K-A is the is the vodka nice. in Poland. But at that point, it was actually either a cleaner or it was medicine. So it was like it was like your 75 proof stuff. I mean, right? it's the strong stuff. It was. <laughs> it was alcohol. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Uh, it was also made from rye. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what it was uh, in the first Polish uh, written uh, documentation. Uh, in the mid 15th century in Europe, we get more of the drink of uh, vodka using the same kind of spelling. But earlier, we're talking 1430, we get the Russian vodka, which is sometimes called bread wine. I do not know if it means that it's made from rye or not, but we just get a, a bread So it's some kind of grain Mm -hmm. for the Russian vodka. Uh, But the Swedes saw potato vodka in the 18th century and it spread out because of Ava. But one more little fun fact, and I have to like jump to the future before we jump to the back. Uh, You ever hear of Absolute Vodka? The brand that has like 37,000 different kinds? Absolutely. (laughs) Very good. Uh, It was made in southern Sweden in 1879. So wow. your absolute vodka is a Swedish. It is now owned by a French company. We're mm-hmm. not going to hold it against them because it's still delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if they would like to sponsor this show, I will not turn them down. Please reach out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, so now because Ava brought the potato vodka to her people, there was a spike in alcohol consumption across Northern Europe. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but hey, it saved a lot of people. <laughs> so it was actually kind of nice as well. Um, I will also say people uh, were not only making potato vodka, they were also making potato dishes. So that really helped um, uh, make breads as well as the alcohol. And it also loosened up for using those grains to be used for things that you can't use potatoes for. So it just kind of helped because, uh, there was actually multiple famines and food shortages that were actually happening. So bringing multiple uses of potatoes to her people really, really helped them in that time of famine. And it did make me wonder about her siblings that didn't make it. If she saw that Mm. we don't want more children dying, we don't want more families to have to grieve through this. So Mm. if we can feed them in some way that is easy and has multiple approaches, that's kind of the essence of what I got from her reason for doing this. Um, she was the first woman elected to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Nice. Sometimes they say she's an honorary member because they're sexist. Uh, the Academy was only open to men. Mm-hmm. Boo. 
Mm-hmm. She get her t- t- titular she degree. Had, she was also 24, so she might have nice. really had a t- titular, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, you know, being 24 and being royalty, maybe the men are like, it's okay, we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she did have essays. So to get into the Royal Swedish Academy, you needed to publish your findings, right? So she published her findings, and it was uh, entitled, Attempts at Producing Bread, Spirit, Starch, and Powder from Potatoes. Very sexy title. (laughs) Uh, Ava, in publishing it, was actually most hopeful that more Swedish women would try their hand at inventing things using items around the house. That was like her hope. Like, look around the house. What other things can we use and, you know, um, find multiple uses for? So I loved that. Um, she did publish more stuff with the Academy as either an honorary member or whatever. Um, one was about bleaching cotton textiles and another one was about bleaching yarn. I don't know why she got into a bleaching era, but she very much it's did at fumes. some point. Yeah. <laughs> it's the fumes. Yeah. yeah that's fair. Vodka wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> she was high on so much vodka fumes. She's like, let's try bleaching. <laughs> you know, maybe it's what you're saying too, because, uh, bleaching linens and upping cleanliness standards yeah that goes really far towards preventing disease yeah. and not you know having people perish especially young children so yeah maybe and it's that same mission mothers who just gave birth as well because yeah. child bed was still very much yeah. a thing yeah <laughs> so yeah bleach those sheets exactly and wash them damn hands <laughs> right wash your damn hands <laughs> still <laughs> yes. holds up please <sighs> let's keep that one uh she also promoted using potato flour in makeup And that Mm. was to replace arsenic that was currently in makeup. It was in like the hair wigs and the, you know, the white face sort of Mm -hmm. thing, especially of royalty, whatever. Uh, Yeah, there was arsenic in that shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that sucked. Um, But the idea of her taking chemicals out of makeup, I very much salute that because I've had too Mm -hmm. much like lipstick going, what is in this? Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm putting it on my lips. What are you doing? doing (laughs) to this makeup yeah um she (laughs) i don't know what happened with her being in the academy but i will say it was another 200 years before another woman was accepted into the royal swedish academy (laughs) do you know what that person was vodka for i can't remember yeah Yeah. i'll put it in the show notes of exactly who it was (laughs) i hope 200 year streak i hope so yeah (laughs) truly jeez it was Amazing that it took that flip and flang and long. Um, as she got older, she actually got more popular. For some odd reason, people really loved her either outspokenness or just kind of as a grandmother of science in Sweden. Uh, but she became more and more popular. Even so, after her death, a Google Doodle was made of her in 2017 Thanks. with a little um, uh, oh, what you, cutting board that oh. had potatoes on it. Oh, right, not, not exactly. Good. I think it alluded to it, but the photo was not vodka. The photo Mm. was potatoes. (laughs) But she died at the age of 61. And for the 1700s, that's pretty damn Mm -hmm. good. I think it's because of the vodka, but I cannot prove (laughs) nor deny deny. sort of thing. So, I mean, I would say, so raise a glass of potato vodka or whatever you drink to Eva Alkablad, because she is a royal woman who saved Sweden with vodka. And I very much appreciate her. her. Right? Exactly. She's the reason we have Riwu. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Swedish people and vodka, these are my existence. Mm. <laughs> yeah, wasn't there uh, some kind of like king or lord or something that couldn't get his people to like try potatoes? Probably. So he like put like a guard on his potato field. <laughs> And the right. peasants came to like steal them because, like, oh, once well, they're guarded, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me now exactly. I'm curious. It's I guarded. would guess Europe is where I would guess that mm-hmm. was. Uh, uh, Germany also had a lot of let's see what we can do with potatoes, uh, time as well because it was a very fruitful crop, and then, of course, famously, the, the Irish lived and breathed on potatoes so much so when there was a famine they left their country (laughs) (laughs) this is how much potatoes are a staple uh to any particular uh society but uh yeah in a swedish dish i will gladly have a potato any single time (laughs) sweet any other questions on the potato have you ever had potato vodka 
I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure either. That was yeah. my thing too. I have yeah. no idea of what a lot of my vodka is made out of actually. I just know when it's tasty. <laughs> I would assume. <laughs> right? I would just assume that I've had vodka, so it's probably potato vodka. Right. Because there's potato, there's rye, and mm -hmm. is it basically just a... I don't know. Katie, do you remember anything about hops? Does hops make... No, I don't think vodka? so. Vodka? I didn't think so either. Because it makes vodka. a beer. So I'm yeah. like going, I think you would go the beer route before you would go. That's, I mean, the hops, hops don't add any alcohol to the beer. That's just flavor. So yeah. I saw some things that called a vodka when it was basically grape wine. It was fermented, mm -hmm. like really like breaking down uh, grape wine. But it's still a grape based drink. So I wouldn't call it a vodka for my yeah. my scientific knowledge. I remember uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine, yeah. a whole bunch of people were boycotting vodka. And ah, I remember there wow. was yeah. the, there you go. The absolute was like, oh, it's not Russian. Right, yes, exactly. Uh, like, yep. You can still have yep. the absolute vodka. You're supporting Please. the Swedes and the French <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no, that's totally fair. Yeah, so I mean, I feel like uh, if we've taught anything today, we should do a uh, vodka experiment. We should look and see all the different <laughs> kinds of vodka, and we should totally partake and report back. If we have to. And, you know, I'm just <laughs> saying, it's uh, it's my mission that I am instilling on all of the non-alcoholics out there. <laughs> I like trying new things, so <laughs> Everyone, I will partake. Go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Permit your own potatoes and report back. Yes, <sighs> I like that idea. Especially if you have to work that hard with your own potatoes. Uh, yeah, you were going to savor that glorious vodka. So, should I wrap it up? Yes. Yeah, da -da -da. Well, that wraps it up for us this week. Join us next week as another Scandinavian gal is picked to share as the Gals Guide podcast continues. Thanks for listening. Want to learn about more women of history? Gals Guide opened a unique women's history lending library. Come visit and explore our collection. Learn more at galsguide.org. Thanks for listening.